What's up guys? I'm Crystal Lee Naomi, aka Jasmine Borders on Tyler Perry's Sisters. Be sure to subscribe to the Haves and the Have Nots review for not only reviews on the Haves and the Have Nots, but also on Sisters. And while you're at it, give your girl a follow on Instagram at Crystal Lee Naomi. And I'll see you every Wednesday at night only on BET. All right, Sisters fans, here we are talking about season two, episode 18, entitled When It's Midnight. Literally, when I read the title, I was like, is this thriller? It's close to midnight. So before going further in this review, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button to show you like the video. Hit the bell notification icon and select all. That way you don't miss out whenever I post new content to the channel. Follow me on social media. Links are in that description below. We are less than a thousand people away from 100,000 members on the Facebook group. Holy crap. And uh, yeah, so be sure to join the Sisters Facebook group. We only have a four episodes left before um, we get to the end of season two and I just refreshed the Facebook page and yes we yeah we're at 99,000 um, and some change so we need less than a thousand group members I know we can reach it by the end of the week so let's just jump into it now to be completely honest I did not dislike the episode. I feel like I'm going to be rinsing and repeating a lot of what I said in my oval review, which thank you. That video, I believe, is already over 4,000 hits. And I was a little nervous because my review was over 30 minutes long. But despite not being my favorite episode of season three thus far, there were a lot of things to talk about in the episode. Yeah, the uh, video is almost at 5,000 views. So I gave the oval a 7.5 out of 10. I'm not going to lie here. I'm going to give this episode. I know you're probably going to disagree with me, but I'm going to give this episode of Sisters a five out of ten. I know that seems low, but this is this episode was kind of like in the middle of the road for me. What I mean by that is we're just really rehashing the same things over and over and over and over. Now, I've tried to be more lenient with these shows on Viacom, um, you know, when I realized I can't get so frustrated with like the Oval or Sisters for certain things because these shows are in their season twos. They're not season five or seven because after being in the same kind of rut with the haves and the have nots, which has been on for like almost a decade at this point, you get sick of certain things. But part of me wants to be more lenient on the newer shows, but then also part of me is like, well, Tyler Perry should know by now what works and what doesn't. But what I mean by that is, we're about to wrap up season two of sisters and it just in a way it doesn't even feel like we've gone anywhere with the main characters let's let's get into the episode and maybe you'll see what i mean all right so we start off pretty well uh karen's just kind of dismissing gary and telling him to leave and this dude is cool-headed he isn't rude about it he just leaves which is a stark contrast to you know how he interacted with karen at the uh, salon earlier that day and just past encounters when he doesn't get his way he's all rude he just switches up so it's like they say the proof is in the pudding and it looks like he is moving towards getting better that's what it looks like so after gary leaves karen rightfully calls out andy and it's kind of funny because when you think about it karen is lashing out at andy the same way gary used to so in a way no wonder that Andy's calling out Karen and then saying that he's not a bad man. Now, I'll do a separate video on that, but let's just focus on the episode here. So Karen's like, so you lied to me, huh? I didn't lie. I omitted the truth. Lawyer talk. It's like you and this isn't me trying to shame um, victims of abusive relationships, but it's almost like, Andy, you want to get hurt. It's like you're just so freaking delusional right now. That it's just hard to even defend her actions. But at the same time, I think I said this back in season one. Andy is frustratingly realistic because I feel like we know people like Andy in our lives where they're interacting with someone. They're with someone who is no good for them at all. And sometimes keep in mind, it isn't always a abusive relationship in terms of like physical abuse. Sometimes people are in a caring situation where they're just holding on to a Zach. More so season one, Zach in season two, but someone who's like a freeloader, he has kind of a dead end job. I mean, sure, at least he's working, but it really doesn't matter if he's working because he doesn't help chip in on the rent or anything. He's just freeloading. And it's like, you know, they can do better, but they stay with him anyway, or they break up a bunch of times and they get back together. So yeah, it is frustratingly realistic. So 
Karen's like, look, you know what? It's been a long day. It's late. We'll talk about this later. She continues to chew Andy out. And then this is what frustrates me the most about Andy. She tries to just constantly throw Zach back in Karen's face. Well, your heart's still with Zach. You still love Zach. Yeah, but I left Zach and I'm with Aaron now. Whereas you, you just feel so desperate because you're alone and you want to be married that you just want to be. Because when Karen said this merry man came in here to get us uh, proposed to you. But then it's like, look, here's the divorce papers here, everything. Here's the proof. Here's the counselor, um, the contact information. She's getting better. I don't even know. I don't even think Andy can is. I don't even think Andy believes herself. That's honestly what it feels like because she's so desperate to hold on to Gary that her for a lawyer. Her defense makes no sense. Oh, that's a good one. And then even I feel like Karen said one of the best lines of the episode where she speaks for the audience. How can you be so successful and so smart in all these other areas of your life, except when it comes to men? I was like, damn. That was something else. And I could be wrong, but I think Karen was taller than Andy in this scene. Yes, I'm well aware. I believe that Andy did not have any shoes on while Karen had on heels. I don't know if this was a wardrobe thing where it's like to show that, hey, Karen is towering over Andy to show that, hey, I'm going to slap you down, not physically like Gary, but slap you out of this trance you're in. I did like when, uh, what was it? Well, I did think of what the only thing about Karen I didn't like is when she tried to put the ring down the, uh, down the pipe in the sink. And I'm like, girl, pawn that thing. But then again, Andy did just get over a million dollars in a settlement, so she don't need it. But it just frustrates me that Andy just tries to constantly throw Zach in um, Karen's face. Like, oh, your heart didn't leave him. It just that. No, it doesn't make sense. And then she's like, well, he's not a bad man. You don't know him. He's a good man. And it's like, well, that's true. Karen doesn't know Gary. But then again, think about it. Karen is the only friend of yours that you told um, about in regards to Gary. So. Yeah, Karen knows everything that you told her, but he al she also knows how to read bullshit from a mile away, which apparently you can't do, which is strange because you're a freaking lawyer. It's just it's just baffling to me. It's it's kind of, it's like um somebody who's trying to hold something against you when their hands are much dirtier. Let me just put it this way. It's like um again, I'm just going to come up with a random example. Let's say that you're friends with somebody since elementary school. And it's like they know you cheated on like a seven. Uh, yeah, a test in the seventh grade It's like, hey, you had a cheat sheet in the algebra test in spring semester or whatever. Let's just say your friend has that dirt on you. And then like fast forward, maybe 15 years later or whatever. And your friend like stole from a bank or no, let me downgrade. Let's say, well, no, honestly, yeah, let's say your friend uh, robbed from a grocery store or something like that. You know, basically they did something that they should have done. And it's like your friend, it's like when you try to call out your friend because they try to rob another. So it's like, bro, you literally almost had your life ruined because you uh, stole money. You stole groceries. You did this or that at like a Walmart or whatever. And then your friend is like, well, what about that time you cheated on the test in seventh grade? And it's like, what? You see how, look, when you look at this from the Christian's perspective, sin is sin. Very true. But when you look at it from the... Um, logical standpoint if you will okay me cheating on a test in seventh grade how in the world does that compare to me to compare to you robbing a store consequences are very different there same thing with uh zach and karen correct me if i'm wrong but didn't like the only time uh zach quote-unquote abused karen was when uh he threw some keys and accidentally hit her and then with the whole gary thing gary literally bruised andy's ribs very different situation okay i'm done with it so she doesn't want to hear anything from karen i'm going to bed leave so she just leaves all right so then we go to jacoby and uh he this is an off-screen conversation because when we go over to the bar he's telling sabrina hey i'll be more open-minded and long story short not much to say here she ends up driving home he pays for their drinks because after some begging they go back to her spot and you know what? I might as well just skip to that part anyway. So basically, uh, they go to her place. They're drinking some more. Uh, he gets up to leave. He tries to make a move on her. But, you know, she's like, 
you know, no, no, no. It's like, wait, is that your cell phone? Like, nope. You want to see it, don't you? And she's like, no, 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 no. Hey, put it away. Uh, cause I got neighbors. So then Jacoby leaves. Thankfully, this wasn't really as dragged out as I thought it would be because I thought he would like, you know, really, really, really beg. And then she give in. But I like the fact that, you know, she just felt it. And it's like, <gasps> so then, you know, he ends up leaving. Okay. So we got Aaron, uh, driving and he calls Karen and, you know, Karen's upset about the whole situation with Andy and Gary. And, uh, it's like, Hey, you had a bad talk. Um, I'll grab some food and swing on by. And he's like, Hey, uh, hold it in right now until, you know, I'm there so I can support you. Hmm. Cool. Uh, so again, let me just jump to that scene. So Aaron comes in with some dinner and, uh, to sum up the scene pretty well, he just tells Karen, like, look, I understand she's your friend. I understand that you're upset, but are, is, is it really our place to judge that situation in regards to Andy and Gary? He makes a valid point. I mean, at some point you have to say, you know what, Andy, I don't agree with your choices, but you are a grown woman, so you can do whatever you want. But there's also the argument of that's my friend. I know she's been in a situation like this before, and I don't want to see her in the grave because guess what? If she dies because of that marriage relationship whatever then it's going to be i'm going to feel responsible because i wasn't able to stop it that's a very valid sentiment i honestly agree with both sides of this but aaron only saw the gary side and i'm not saying that aaron is wrong i mean yeah you're the you're his like not therapist but you're like his uh spiritual uh counselor if you will but at the same time it's like well aaron you know things really aren't good Andy isn't good with her decision making with men and Gary has shown that, you know, he's not the best guy to be around. So at the end of the day, I really don't see any side of this wrong. I think Aaron was completely justified in his way of thinking. But as Andy's close friend, Karen also had a valid point. I like scenes like this where really there's no it's almost like Captain America Civil War between like Team Tony and Team Cap, you know, where both sides make valid points. That's kind of how I feel about the scene. I really liked it. And then they rushed all to the bedroom and I'm like, are they going to have sex or not? I thought they were supposed to be celibate, but they probably just fooling around. Okay. So um, then we got Hayden going over to Fatima's place for dinner. And when she brings up Zach being in jail, he's completely unshaken about it. But apparently she looked at the neighbor's cameras and there's a guy named Leon who is uh, close friends with Hayden, almost like a goon, thug, a yes man. And the camera work shows that he actually planted drugs in the back of the truck. So if Hayden doesn't get Zach out of jail tonight, she's going to go to the boss at work and have him, you know, screwed over, you know, uh, in a career field. So she pretty much says, look, we went out one time. We had sex one time. I regret it because I don't like you. You don't turn me on. I don't like guys like you. And it's like, get out of my house. Take your <laughs> take your cheap wine with you. I'm like, well, damn. All right. You know, that's messed up. I don't even think that, uh. She even got a plate of food for him. I mean, it was like a couple of sips of that wine and that was a wrap. So after that, I think Maurice is at the uh, gay bar. And I think, what is it? One, uh, the bartender, Chris, and then the butt liquor. I forgot his real name. But apparently um, he confronts him about telling Sabrina. Well, technically he told Danny, who told Sabrina about Calvin doing coke. And Chris is like, no, he didn't. He, he's clean. So he probably saw somebody else. And I'm like, well, remember, well, no. Yeah, I remember saying that it could have been Aaron, you know, a tall guy who's light skinned. But at the same time, Calvin has hair while Aaron does not. But whatever. And uh, so basically, uh, Chris tells Maurice that Calvin was in here like an hour ago talking with a guy. Maurice is like, wait, he told me he was going out with a girl. So after that, um, I think it's brought up that a uh, ex or something of Maurice was here earlier talking with somebody else. But you know, Maurice like, no, I moved on. So he ends up leaving. And after that, let's see here. Yeah. Zach comes home. Well, comes over to Fatima's because he's out of jail. He knows that isn't legit. And you know, she reveals that Hayden did have something to do with it. And Zach is reasonably shaken up. It's like, look, I can't do this anymore because you know, he's going to keep effing with me. I'm on probation. And then Fatima's like, look, I got him. Don't worry about it. And, um, He's rightfully on the edge. So he tries to get her to go into the shower, but she's like, nah, I had to get a friend of a friend to do my hair. So he goes in the shower. He's like, hey, well, wait up for me when I get out. So he goes to shower and she waits for him on the couch. Okay, and we're almost done here. This review is like probably going to be half as long as the Oval. But yeah, the last couple of scenes to talk about here, um, we got Danny 
pretty much being untrusting of Preston's sister at dinner. She's semi drunk, basically gouging down the bottle. And, uh, you know, she is being pretty rude. And look, I know Preston was kind of, you know, not right for inviting someone over unannounced, but at the same time, um, Danny's just, you know, not being polite. And the sister agrees to leave, um, just so these two can straighten things out. And, Danny regresses back to her, oh, I'm going to lash out and not tell you what's wrong as opposed to trying to work it out. And I can understand both perspectives. I'm like a Preston. I'm a fixer. And I recognize in not past relationships, but semi relationships where I, I just had this knack of me and a girl get close. But for whatever reason, it just doesn't work. We don't even get to a relationship stage where I'm a fixer. You know, I understand, you know. Not everyone wants to kind of just stop in that moment and talk about it. They have to process their emotions before they talk about it. But at the same time, it's like to just completely dismiss me and tell me to go and stuff like that. Because Preston's like, fine, I'll leave. Well, you're the one who's saying it. So, I mean, I don't blame Preston for just grabbing his bag and you're ready to leave. It's like, I can't sit around and just go through this time after time again. So, Danny's like, please just leave your bag. Go for a walk for like 30 minutes and then we'll talk. So, that's what happens. He ends up coming back. They sit on the couch and he does come. He's well off. They do come for money. Cause honestly, when, you know, when his brothers or half brothers are like, you ain't taking none of our money. I'm thinking to myself, y'all ain't got shit. But then I'm like, oh damn. Okay. That's right. They do have their own company doing stuff. And then he is like, you know, these limited edition boots. <laughs> and, uh, basically, yeah, this is what happens. She sees that, you know, Preston's sister had like this big ring on her finger and whatnot. She was basically insecure in season one. It was about like, being secure being fighting her insecurities being comfortable with who she is i think that has something to do with her body and then the season two is about her surroundings you know barely paying rent and stuff like that whereas you know oh your first impression or your family's first impression of me is like this little apartment which honestly is a nice apartment like they don't know if they're behind on the if she's behind on the rent i think that danny has a nice place to be honest so it's like I don't want to be with you for money it has nothing to do with it. And then Preston's again trying to reassure her. It doesn't really matter. Just he pretty much uplifts her. It's almost like Preston is to Danny what Fatima is to Zach. Yeah, you might not have what you want. You might not be at the top right now, but I see not only potential, but where you are is a temporary spot. You just work hard and that's it. And it's not like, you know, pulling yourself up by the bootstraps. It's like literally applies to anyone. If you aren't satisfied with your current surroundings, just work harder to make it happen. Sure, I know there are different people, you know, races, ra races, not races, races, um, or just families in general where they come from wealth. Like, uh, oh, if you got an invention idea or something new, people who can like put down a down payment or starter up cash. But then again, you have people who don't have that. Like they don't have the education. They don't have the uh, family who can like, you know, invest in them. They have to work hard. Opportunities don't always knock for everyone. I mean, and sometimes they do, but they might not end up the same way they will for somebody else. But overall, he just, you know, gives her positive reinforcement. But at the same time, this is why I didn't really like the episode. We go through the same thing again. Would you please hear me out before you fly off the handle? It's just the same thing. But then we get to a cliffhanger ending with Maurice going back to the apartment and he hears a lot of, he hears Calvin. I thought, I'm pretty sure that was Calvin moaning from his room. And next thing you know, a guy walks out and then Maurice's face at the end of the episode was priceless. So that was pretty much the episode in itself. And like I said, it's a five out of 10 for me because we just are going through the same things over and over again. Just the same things. It's like Andy is pretty much pushing everyone away. And I don't even blame Gary. Andy's the one who's doing that. Um, also on top of that, uh, we got the same situation with um, Danny just being insecure and then pushing everyone away. And then she kind of warms up when Preston talks to her and, you know, at least Zach is out of jail, but we still don't know about the credit card stuff. We just know that the drugs were planted by Hayden and his associates, but we still don't know who charged the credit card. And I re I wish we could have seen, believe it or not, I wish Rhea could have been in the episode for if no other reason to be like, I'm, I was wrong about you, Zach. And Zach's like, yeah. And then just leaves just to kind of tell her off. But it's just crazy. Um, Yeah, this episode was meh. I'm glad I didn't stay awake for it because I would have been kind of bored. So that's my opinion. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, if you want to donate to the channel, feel free to do so on PayPal or Cash App.